Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here, and we are back with more VO Buzz Weekly. Yes, it's part two with the amazing Jeremy Shada. Let's, Let's get, get buzzed. buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. I mean, obviously you started, you know, performing at a young age, but mm -hmm. From the time you were little, did you always want to be an actor? Or? Yeah, I. So, I mean, I kind of started when I was like five or six, which yeah. is more or less the time when you're coherent enough to be like, "Hey, so, I like this." Yeah. Um, but my parents never were the ones that like nudged us into it. Actually, my my older brother Zach was the one who initially wanted to start doing it. And he's right. about four years older than me, so he would have been about I don't know, like nine, ten, maybe. Um, and he always had an interest in, in movies, and he had like a video camera. He'd like make his own little home movies and stuff. Um, and I guess somehow he realized that Los Angeles is like the place where that all works, and we mm -hmm. live there. And he's like, "Hey, Dad, like I want to do acting and stuff." My dad's like, "Oh gosh, like I, I don't even, you know, he's, <laughs> that's a whole, that's a whole thing." Um, but he like didn't want to crush his dreams, so he's like, "Okay, well." Um, he looked up like local agencies, like mm -hmm. talent stuff, or, like commercial and whatnot. Um, took him into an agent. Um, they had a meeting, and they're like, "Okay, thanks for coming in." After they talked to him for a little bit, kind of assumed that was probably the end of it. But he was like, "Hey, like I don't know what else to do. Like I tried." Um, and then on the way back from that meeting, that agent had called my my dad and was like, "Hey, can you um, come back? Can you take well? Can you take Zach by <laughs> oh. this audition actually?" And he's oh, like, okay. "All right." He's like, "It's all way Let's over see in Culver City." This is but, going. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he mm -hmm. took Zach uh, to this audition, and Zach booked the job, and at that time hadn't even signed with his agent mm -hmm. yet. First thing he ever went out on, um, and after me, like, then he, like, worked on it and stuff, obviously, and then, like, little me, like, seeing that, I was like, that's the coolest <laughs> thing in the world! I'm gonna do that, What yeah. the heck? Yeah. I wanna do that, literally. Um, and then my dad's like, oh, gosh, now I got, like, more, more <laughs> I got <here." laughs> Crap. Um, and so at that point, I'm like, wow, you go out on an audition and you just book stuff. Yeah, this is the best you living money. in the world. Uh, you know, obviously not the case. You know, yeah. a couple yeah. thousand non-booked auditions <laughs> later. Right. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> that's, that was my entry point, and I just, uh, you know, started doing it and just loved it. And I've always, you know, as a little kid, just watching, like, everything from, like, Star Wars to Jurassic Park to, like, all these classic movies. Yeah. And, and when I was like growing up, I just I don't know I just I always loved film, and so it was like yeah. one of those things where like if I could like do that, that'd be the coolest thing in the world. And so uh, as I get older, I just kept doing it. And then there's certain people who get to a point where they're like the stuff they liked as a kid. They don't know if they want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was definitely a point where my parents were like, hey, like if you don't like doing this, you definitely don't have to. Like you can do whatever. But I just love doing it, and so I've just kept doing it. And I'm like, this is like the best job in the world, and I really enjoy it. Just the craft of acting, being on set, uh, being in a recording booth for VO or, or doing uh, doing music, any of it. Just entertainment has like, always been my interest. Yeah. Um, and just being able to create something and, and bring people laughter, tears, or whatever. That's cool, yeah. man. So I just yeah. love Let's talk about music real quick yeah. because, uh, first of all, you guys need to so go, good. after you finish watching this mm -hmm. episode, you're gonna go, you're gonna stay on YouTube. Yeah. And you're gonna go and check Make out, out Make Out Monday. Monday. These Subscribe guys are to their freaking channel. insane. So good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and you know, I love too that it's also with your brother. Uh-huh, yep. um, brother so Zach. That's, you guys are so talented, it's such a and great. And Zach is, is singing, who does the scream stuff that I heard? Uh, that's, the crazy that's, that's scream. Zach, that's Zach actually. That's Zach. Man. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, think, I might be he's able to do some of it too, but he just, he's awesome at it, and so he, yeah. that, is, that is him. But me and Zach actually both do the lead vocals, pretty much half and half for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, and so every song we're both singing on, but our voices are like close enough to where they blend together really well. Yeah, and so there's, there's definitely times when, when you can't yes, tell who's singing. Yes. Totally. Um, and so yeah, I, I sing basically co-lead vocals and, and I play bass. Mm -hmm. Zach does the other co-lead vocals and does like synths and piano. And then we have our lead guitar player, John, and our drummer, Seth. Uh, so just cool. the, it's the four of us. Um, and what are some influences of the band? Because yeah. I, I hear a certain something, but I want to hear what there's, you think. There's a, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, all yeah, yeah. four of us, like, growing up, we all have a very just huge range of stuff that we love. I mean, um, for me growing up, I, like, my, I was grown, you know, I was brought up on, like, classic 80s, like, Journey, Foreigner, Asia, right. mm -hmm. Aerosmith, uh, Styx. Well, all I mean, the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah good every, stuff. I mean, and Guns N' Roses, and so on and so forth. There's so many more, too. Uh, Def Leppard. Uh, and then all, also then when I got in like my like kind of preteen area, all like the music around that time was like a lot of like Fall Out Boy, All Time Low, All American Rejects, My Chemical Romance. Yep. Um, 
uh, 36 to Mars, Linkin Park, uh, and like a ton, ton of stuff. And so there's just a big mixture. And then obviously mm -hmm. like the pop artists and stuff too. And so I think for us, the band's big influences are definitely kind of uh, pop punk, um, rock, yep. alternative, um, and a, li a little bit of all of those things kind of mixed into mixed into one, yeah. I guess. But and yeah. that's exactly yeah. what it is. That's very yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. Um, and uh, who who writes? Do you do you all write songs together? Yeah. Or you yeah. And your everything brother, is uh, everything, um, and all of our music uh, is all written by all written by us. Um, and most of it, I'd say like ninety percent lyrically is written by Zach. Um, he's just an amazing songwriter. Yeah. Uh, and then melodically and instrumentally, it's pretty much it's more or less left up to each individual person. So any bass part is me. And any guitar part is John. Uh, obviously, any drum part is Seth. I have no idea how to drum. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. um, any synth piano is is, is definitely Zach. Um, and then there might be like little things where like someone's playing a guitar part, and we're like, hey, like maybe do it just like like this instead. And right. then it's like, oh, cool. But it's all just us kind of collaborating. And sometimes we'll start with uh, like a melody lyric idea that Zach has and go off that. Or sometimes we'll start with like uh, John had this one awesome riff one time that we just loved, and we're like, hey, let's just write something around that because yeah. it's just really catchy and yeah. really cool. Um, how and did so, you come up with yeah. the name for the band? Make Out Monday. Mm -hmm. Yes. So great <laughs> name, by the way. Thank you. Really, really it cool. Is. It's catchy. Uh, very it's, catchy. It's very easy to remember. But we, uh, me and Zach, were just kind of like throwing names back and forth um, when you're going through that whole process. That's always yeah. the. It's the least. It's it's <laughs> fun, but also the least fun because yes. you'll come up with something. You're like, that's cool, and then you look it up, and you're like, that's because someone already has that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and so we we like the idea of having something Monday, but uh, we're you know bouncing around different things for. Blank Monday, uh, and I was on Instagram, and I was just scrolling through, and there was some post that had like the hashtag Makeout Monday, uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's in my head. I was like, this is the stupidest thing in the world. But as a but joke, I'm I was like, as a joke, I was like, hey, how about Makeout Monday? And we were both like laughing about it for a while, and then he was like. It's yeah. actually pretty good. He's like, that's pretty catchy. <laughs> yeah, it like, yeah, catchy. kind of is. Yeah. Um, and so we took it to the other guys and they liked it, but we basically made it three words, so it's like make out Monday. So it's kind of a right. shortened version of like make it out of Monday, which mm -hmm. is Monday being like everybody hates Mondays, it's a crappy yeah. time, so it's yeah. like making it through that to the, to the better times. Um, and it's also just very easy to, you know, I guess market. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. So that's more or less where it came from. I'm not even yeah. saying this because you're here. Right. Because I would say this if you weren't he here. He said this not in your presence. I yeah. will wow. I will vouch. Totally. To it. Totally. I will vouch. And it's like, you know, I appreciate not just great musicians, can, <laughs> and there's a lot of them, yeah. but there's one thing, not every great musician can actually write a great song. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's definitely, yeah. You guys write great songs. Thanks. Thank you. And you're great musicians. Yeah, they really stick. So, I was like humming them. Totally. He's like, you the know the song? Are I'm so like, good no. And but catchy it's just... and rhythmically. Yeah. They, they're, they're just really, really catchy. Thank and you. they're produced really, really mm -hmm. well. Yeah, we've gotten to work with some really awesome producers. So our, um, our first full-length album, which we just released yeah. uh, recently, uh, Visions of Hollywood, is 11 songs. Uh, and I think nine of them are produced by a guy named John Fields who is an awesome producer. He's produced for like Switchfoot, uh, Jonas Brothers, I think he has done about a bajillion other things, Some a little bit all-time low, like a lot, lot, yeah, lot yeah, of different yeah. just really awesome stuff. Mm. Uh, and then the other two songs, Kissophobic and Every Little Everything, are produced by Dan Corneff, and Dan Corneff produced uh, Paramore, he's done like Pierce the Veil. Yeah, so uh, just yeah. they're just yeah, good. And that's why. Very because good, very you, good producers. Exactly. Yeah. When yeah. you hear the stuff, yeah. it sounds like it's all the stuff tight. you hear very on the tight. radio right and, now. And that's why we went to them because we had heard stuff that we liked and we we're like, hey, yeah. let's see if we can reach out to these people and work with them. And yeah. so they were awesome enough to work with us. Um, and and yeah, so it just they just they sound good, and we're we're super proud of it. Obviously, yeah. you should be. So man. obviously, we want you to go to Make Out Monday on YouTube and subscribe. We want you to go to Twitter and follow. If them. you want to, you um, where can people get the music? <laughs> uh, so it's on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, uh, Google Play. I think you Maybe. guys have. Does the band have a website? We do. Yeah, MakeoutMonday.com. We did get the dot com. Cool. Is, and yeah. you guys actually perform live? We do. Yeah, we're actually uh, we're working out in between your crazy busy schedule. <laughs> yeah, we're actually working on doing a full tour right now, nice. um, awesome. which we're hoping to do later this year. So more details on that. Great. Beautiful. Um, but that's what we're that's what we're actively actively working on. That's what we want right. to do next. So. And also, you can Down. do uh, yeah. Jeremy Shada on Twitter too and find out information there. Yeah. So obviously, some other cool stuff that people love that you're doing. Voice for Wise cool Land. Stuff. Voltron. Voltron. Voltron, yes. Super great. Um, you also have your live action. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Student, Mr. Student Body, Body President, President on uh, Verizon's Go90. Yeah, app. yeah. Also very, very fun. 
Try and, I try and stay as busy as possible, yeah. obviously. You know, <laughs> yeah. Very stay different. as busy yeah. as possible. Yeah. Yeah. How busy do you want to be when you're 21? Yeah. When you think about, I mean, when you think about kind of where you are now, um, what is the ultimate goal for you career-wise in music and, and mm -hmm. in your acting? Yeah. I, I mean, I, whenever people, whenever I kind of get that question or like, or versions of that question. Um, you refuse to answer? Yeah. Just, yeah. I was like, no, I'm kidding. Right, um, moving on. I guess for me, it's always like more or less just like I want to be able to just consistently work and mm -hmm. and and get to do stuff that I really enjoy doing and have fun with, um, whatever form or shape that takes, whether it be whether it be you know voice voiceover or 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 the music side or uh, on camera live action stuff, um, any any and all that I love doing, and so that's. For me, it's like if I can do it and make a living at it, that's 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 pretty much where I want to be. You yeah. know, however, whatever form of a living that actually is, it's, it's kind of to me is inconsequential as long as I can make a living doing it mm -hmm. uh, and get to work with really fun people and, and keep having fun with it. That's uh, which is what you're doing right now. So, yeah. which is literally what I'm doing. Yeah. So, if so there's, you're basically if there's like, living the dream. Yeah. yeah. Aren't you? And yeah. if there's like there's like of course everyone has like dream projects that they yeah. like, sure. love to work on and stuff, uh, and then you have like in the back of your head. But um, but until you get there, you just work on basically what you can work on, what you're mm -hmm. given at times. Um, and yeah. then there's stuff that, it's so funny because everybody has like their dream projects. Like me, like as a little kid, like Star Wars is my favorite thing in the world. So like mm -hmm. the obviously like dream project is like, oh, being a Star Wars movie. But then there's like, there's the stuff that you end up working on and, and, and getting that wouldn't have been a dream project because it didn't exist, you know? Right. Like yeah. you wouldn't have even thought of it as a possibility because it didn't exist until they made this thing and then you got cast in it like an Adventure Time mm -hmm. or like a Voltron. Um, and then those end up being like the coolest things and you have so much fun with it. Um, and so, so for me, it's like whatever I have the opportunity to work on, I am more than yeah. happy to would you yeah. consider? Would you consider your, would you attribute your success to uh, more to luck or more to Prepare. preparedness? I think it's always both <laughs> because at the end of the day, like it's such a, I mean, it's such a, there's so many things that come into when you're auditioning for yeah. something. Mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely the just the sole factor of being in the right place at the right time and being the right look at the right time or whatever else. Um, and it's just, it's it's so random at times because you'll go out on stuff and you'll have this awesome performance. You'll be like, you put the work in, like you did well and you're like, man, I felt really great about that. Yeah. And then you never hear anything back and you're like, what the heck happened? Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, the, the, role, the role is a girl now, you know, or so, you know, something <laughs> right. random, you know, it's like, right. oh, well, okay, I was, yeah. I can grow up my hair, now. that doesn't work, work. okay, uh, you know, like, there's so many things like that, or they're like, oh, well, they cast the parent, which you look nothing like, or, right. or something right. like that, they're like, well, the other lead literally looks just like you, so they can't have that, you know, like, right. you literally would look like twins, or, or anything, or they're like, you know, I just didn't like his shirt, the shirt that he was wearing in that edition, wasn't having it, yeah. yeah, so there's so many random factors that are out of your control, and so all you can really do is, Prepare as much as you can. Yeah, do your best. Work. Be confident in what you're doing. Put your best foot forward, and then the stuff that you don't get, you weren't meant to have anyway. Right. Uh, and right. the stuff that you do get, obviously, there's a reason you did, um, and then you're just thankful and stoked on it. So, I think there's there is the luck involved, but it's still you have to actually back that up with talent and, and skill and being able to actually do it. Because once you book a job, you can get something, but if you were terrible on set or you're terrible in the booth, it doesn't really matter because right. yeah, that news travels bad. fast. Yeah. yeah, oh, hundred percent. And there is something to be said for doing work that's great and memorable. And we've had people sitting in that chair that that are casting directors and that have said, mm -hmm. "I remembered, I remembered yeah. solid acting. I remember even good if you don't get the job for yes. something, if you put in the work they, and have a good audition, yes. they're like, hey, like that person wasn't right for this, but they yeah. did something really cool. I like and that. something later they bring yeah. you exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's been. Uh, Matthew Mercer, who uh, we were talking oh, yeah. about Overwatch, mm -hmm. and he was saying that Andrea Toyas, you know, initially he wasn't brought in for it. Yeah. But then she remembered, oh no, and she, you know, so there is something mm -hmm. to be said for the parts you can control. Mm -hmm. Nail those, and yep. then the rest you just got to give it up. Absolutely, man. Let it go. That's what. It, that's what. That's it is. so cool. Is there anybody in the industry that you dislike? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a list, but you never we'll talk about that. We're just gonna scroll the list at the end. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. It'll um, be in the credits. Are there a few people? And I listen. There's probably millions of them by now. But are there a few people that you that you could name or would name, mm -hmm. um, who have really you know attributed to like your success? Mentored, yeah. Oh, yeah, like mentors yeah. that um, have there's, helped you. There's got to be a ton. I mean, like even first and foremost, just like literally like earlier, like my parents. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then on top of that. Uh, for the voiceover side, I mean, 
John DiMaggio and Tom Kenny, I've learned a lot from those two yeah. guys over the years, just watching watching them work. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's just something that I literally just like. They're and they're just like the coolest people too. Mm-hmm. And, and those, the people that are the most talented, but that are also just like the most down to earth and just kind, cool people. Yeah. Um, you learn from so much more. Uh, right. And you're excited about learning from those types of people because they're so cool anyway that you just like want to hang out with them. Totally. Um, and there's everybody has those experiences where like there's someone who you like you know wanted to meet or something, or you're like, oh, that person, like, that's going to be so cool to work with them, and then you do, and you're like, uh, that yeah. kind of sucks. Not so much. Yeah. yeah, and then, like, you Who's don't really learn anything. Like Bobby. Like that Bobby. Bobby person. Yes. Aw, oh, poor Bobby. It's very funny, because one of my closest friends' <laughs> name is Bobby, so that just makes me think <laughs> oh, of Bobby. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other Bobby. Good old yeah. Bobbo. Um, but, yeah, and then also, I mean, like, uh, castmates on just, I mean, tons of shows. One of my, I don't even know if it's, like, a learning thing, but just, like, one of my castmates on Mr. Student Body President um, my like the other co-lead in that show, uh, Arden. Um, it's me and her, like the two main people. Um, she's just she also just an awesome person, like super close friend. And it's funny, like when you're shooting a show too. Even when you're voiceover, you can get cl- close to people. But when you're like shooting a show and you're like shooting five days a week, like 14, 15 hour days and stuff, you're just like on set with someone all day. Like you get very close because like right. you're just like yeah. in between takes. So uh, what's you? your background? Yeah. Like yeah. What, you're gonna talk about something. Um, and so she's just like one of my closest friends now, and so and she's just the coolest person. And that's the other thing is you find is just like some people you work with, you just you just make such awesome friends, mm-hmm. um, and you just go super super close with. And then like when you have those people and you're working with them, you have that chemistry built in. Then when you're friends with them, you're like have such a better product because yeah. Yeah. you're equally wanting to make something awesome, and you're equally like, hey, like let's try this, and you're like comfortable like try whatever. Um, on on the page, on screen, and so it's just yeah, it's just so much fun. And then there's like, and then there's just people that I've never even met, but it's like as actors, and you watch them, and you're like, that person is awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna be like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And that's that list is like, yeah, yeah we're not even gonna talk about infinite. That list. You know, yeah. it's infinite. <laughs> yeah. Um, so oh, well, and you know, you maybe can't fully appreciate this, but I would invite you to. Um, there are people that are watching that mm. are looking at you saying. Man, I really look up to him, and it, it, it they could be older. It doesn't have to be younger people. That is, that is, um, and it's, and it's true. A, I have people important. come up that are literally older than me, and they're like, "Man, like you're so inspiring to me," and like that's so. It's always so surreal for me because I'm like, I'm literally like younger than this person. Yeah. Um, and and it, also, even when you have people that are that you're a fan of, then you find out that they're a fan of you. That's that's even yeah. more crazy. Mm-hmm. And you're yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. really? Like you you listen to you watch our show? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's just like it's super humbling too, knowing when you when you know that. And so that's just very it's very. But fun. I yeah. think when people they 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 tap into the essence of your your living your life mm-hmm. with your purpose and authentically, and yeah. that's something that has no age, it has no gender. Oh, totally. And so that's something. Hundred um, percent. Yeah. You need more water. We're yeah, no, it's water. all good. But We're it's it's always that thing of just like <laughs> if you love what you do, you like never really work a day in your life. Like there's times yes. when like what you're doing is hard. <laughs> it can be very hard work. Absolutely. But when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like it, uh, and it's all like super super worth it. Yeah, isn't um, that the best kind of job? Yeah. I mean, Rob Paulson says that if you you're in the right business when you're doing when you're not doing it for the money. Mm-hmm. Like if you got paid zero and you still want to still do love it, doing it, yeah, that's a great mm-hmm. job, right? It feeds your soul. If so you would cool. do it as a hobby, getting paid nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just out of pure love of doing it, then it's like then it's a great gig. Yeah. So then when you do get paid, it's even that much oh, better. Yeah. <laughs> so what matters the most to you in your life right now? Um, wow, that is a very existential question. <laughs> 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 the matters the most, you know what? Um ultimately for me, um what matters most is that uh, I mean I'm very, very family oriented. Um and so and I just I just want to be as kind and loving as possible to everybody. And so for me it's like I just want to be a good example to people, especially in this industry. There's a lot of there's a lot of great people, but there's also a lot of not great people. Um and so there's plenty of people that like you have all these kids especially as like an actor that are like looking up to you and stuff. And so for me I like want to be a really good um role model, I guess, in a lot of ways. And that's not something that you when you start it so young that you have as a um, is a desire at first, but then right. when you get older, um, it definitely becomes something. You feel that responsibility. Yeah, you point. do, and yeah. and you have, especially when you're going to like Comic Cons and stuff, and you have these families and these parents come yeah. up to you and they're like, "Oh, my son loves you." You're like, "Oh, wow, okay." Um, and so, yeah, for me, like, I just want to be, I guess, a good role model to people. And ultimately, for me, another thing that has kept me super, super, super grounded um, 
in in life, um, even and this stems from my family as well too, is just um, my faith, obviously. Um, and so that like that is ultimate to me. Like every, everything else, my work, job, anything like I could lose and I would be fine. Mm-hmm. I'd be you know, I'd be it'd be good. I could make it work, make it happen. Um, so. My faith is like the most important thing to me, yeah. and so I just want to basically be a good example and love on people um, as much as I possibly can. And this, and for me, it's like a good place to do that and uh, and just work and get to do what I do. And I've been blessed with the ability to be in this industry yep. uh, and have, the, I guess, the abilities and talents that I've been given to uh, to do that in this industry. And so that's like that's the most important thing for me. So if I can consistently work, uh, meet awesome people, be uh, be a, a good hard worker and just love people. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the most well, you, thing, you know what? The, you, you, those are all um, the ingredients. You're kind of nailing yeah. it so far, my Absolutely. friend. Absolutely. And it's really, it's really refreshing and amazing to have you on the show and to be able to celebrate that and to put that out into the world mm-hmm. because you are influencing people that you may never meet. Yeah. By your example, which is, which is just and which is crazy. I mean, we especially love in this that age and appreciate with that. Even social so. media and stuff too. You like end up interacting with so many people that there's no way you would have ever no. mm-hmm. um, in a million years yeah. interacted with. So that's just, it is it is that crazy, yeah. that crazy thing now, but yeah. yeah. Well, it speaks a lot to your you know upbringing what, dude, that I you acknowledge that. I want to be like you that. when I grow up. Okay, Chuck, <laughs> we'll I just work on that. <laughs> if I had met you <laughs> when I was a little kid, I would have been like, I want to be like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you're already a great person. I <laughs> understand that. But it's like going back, man, it's like I wish I had friends like you. You know that were like so just grounded and just yeah. thank you, and such thank great you. human beings. I mean, I turned out that way by luck. I think. Oh, uh, but, not uh, quite. Sheer no, no, luck. Seriously, man, you, you, you know, your, your, your home is built on solid ground all yeah. the way around. So much balance. And man. you have to. I mean, there's like there, everybody has ups and downs in their life. Yeah. And if you don't have something that's solid that is outside of just like your work mm-hmm. um, you or your relationships even, yeah. like yeah. you will suddenly crumble up once everything gets flipped on its head, which it inevitably does for anybody throughout their life. Um, and so that's the main thing is just you know, have like kind of a, really that's, I mean like having a higher purpose yeah. and a higher goal and not having just like my work be the most important thing to me is probably what keeps me grounded. Yeah. Well, because you know when you ask people like, how are you? Their level of happiness or contentment is based on the number of bookings. And so I always or say, based like, on the, most, the, the amount of money that they have, right. or like yeah, the how many Twitter right. followers, yeah, right. Right. which is a bad oh, place to be. Right. Very bad. bad. Are you verified? Am I verified? No, yeah. but I mean, I always say to Chuck, like, are you not verified? <laughs> I'm verified. <laughs> <laughs> I see you at the verification I don't think we're meetings. Because you're not. Verified. Yeah, I'm verified. I can't tweet yeah. you if you're not verified. Um, uh, <laughs> no, but I, I always say like the things that matter the most to me can't be taken away from me. Mm-hmm. And so you know you're going to get jobs and lose jobs yep. and have money and lose money, but really, you know, when you strip it all away, what really matters. So. Hey, let's ask Jeremy a uh, Ooh, mystery, the mystery question. question. Oh, solid. So that he can go home and have, like, some fun. Play some games or something. Go make some tacos. So, play some Fortnite. That's pretty <laughs> do. My girlfriend's out of town right now, so I'm just oh. like, what do I do? Oh, what do I do? <laughs> um, if you needed to change your name, what would you choose? Solid. Ooh. Okay, that's kind of funny because um, ironically, I you actually did Bobby. Change, no, yeah, you <laughs> did change your name. I actually did change my name. Really? Name. Um, this is very yeah. I, my actual my legal birth name is Jaden Jeremy Patrick Shada. Mm-hmm. So technically, I'm actually Jaden. Um, but I, for whatever reason, as a little kid, just always liked Jeremy better. I don't know what passed me why that was the case, <laughs> but he did. Uh, and so I just always went by Jeremy. And then it got to that point where like literally no one called me Jaden. Uh, and I'd only gone by Jeremy, and I'd started acting with that name, and I was like, it was just inconvenient, I guess, because like I'd go like travel places for like passport and like documents have to sign like as this name that I never use. Right. And so I was like, I'm just gonna get it changed. So I legally changed it to Jeremy Jaden Shada. So now Jeremy is my first name. I kept the Jaden, just my middle name As now. Middle name. Right. Wow. And then I dropped the Patrick because I don't know why I needed that to begin. Yeah. <laughs> to begin. So, I asked so parents, I'm like, so why do I have like that middle name? They uh, were like, they're like, it's a long we story. We don't know. It's a long <laughs> story. Don't worry about <laughs> yeah. it. Just get, you get rid of it. Like, you had free. an uncle feel that free. was okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was the perfect card for him to get. I know. This happens that all the time. That always happens. I love it. What a trip. Jeremy. Jaden, Shada, get yes. down. You rock, dude. Absolutely, Thank you very dude. Much. Thank you for being here. Man, so being good to here. see you, dude. Of course. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Continued everything amazing mm-hmm. to you and your beautiful family, and we we are so excited to see what comes next for you. Oh, I am big too. stuff, and, um, big stuff, and keep us posting on all the yeah. good uh, band. We're front row oh, for the for tour, sure. man. Yeah. 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 So feel free all to right. follow it up. 
Jeremy Shada, ladies and gentlemen, right over there. Hey, <laughs> we're gonna see you guys next time. Bye. How y'all doing, America? I'm Jeremy Shada. I just got Buzz and Chuck and Stacy. Y'all have a fantastic night. Keep it rocking. Well, that concludes our two-part episode with Jeremy Shada, and it must be so cool to be that young <laughs> and be that talented and just so like talented, own so the world, focused. man. So, yeah. so cool. Yeah. Congratulations to you, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, hey, we hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as we have. We're going to see you next week with a brand new episode. Yes, and leave some comments and questions below and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.